We're going to start Chapter 8, Chemical Reactions and Chemical Equations, and we're going to start with the very basics, uh, which involve balancing chemical equations. When you look at a chemical equation, you simply have two parts. You have the reactants, or the substances that you start with, your reactants, and then you have an arrow that separates the reactants from the products, which are the substances that you end up with, the substances that are formed. So reactants turn into products by the rearrangement of the atoms. You don't create any new atoms. You simply rearrange them from how they are bonded in the products and reactants. You can represent a chemical reaction in several ways. You can write a sentence, sodium metal reacts with chlorine gas to form solid sodium chloride, which is rather lengthy. You can take and turn that into a simplified word equation by simply writing the word sodium plus chlorine, meaning reacts with, and the product to the right-hand side of the arrow. This is certainly a lot shorter than the sentence. Or you can do the best way, which is in a balanced chemical equation. This takes and places the words into the symbols sodium, chlorine gas, and sodium chloride, and now allows you to put these coefficients in front, which give you the balanced chemical equation and the ratio in which the substances react and are produced. You also, in a chemical equation, have symbols that you need to interpret. An arrow, again, separates your reactants from your products and is read as either produces or yields or forms. The plus sign is read as reacts with, or often we simply say sodium plus chlorine, etc. S as a subscript in parentheses means solid, G, gas, L for liquids, and AQ for aqueous or water solutions. Often, a gas is also uh, accompanied by an up arrow, meaning the gas is less dense than air and is released, or a down arrow, meaning you have formed some sort of solid precipitate that settles out. When you look at your equation, those coefficients that you write to balance it are actually telling you the mole ratios between the reactants and the products. Two moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of oxygen. Nothing written is an understood one. We never write a one. It's understood. Produces two moles of water. When you look at your balanced equation, two moles of water, one mole of oxygen produces two moles of CO2. Your molar mass of carbon monoxide is 28 grams per mole. Two moles of that would give you a total mass of 56 grams, plus a mole of oxygen at 32 grams yields two moles of CO2. Each mole of CO2 has a molar mass of 44 grams times 2 gives you a total mass of 88 grams. Notice the mass of your reactants always has to equal the mass of your products. When you balance an equation, that is what you're showing, that your atoms are not created or destroyed. You simply have formed these products by rearrangement of the atoms. And all of the atoms that we start with, we must also end up with. So in balancing an equation, we are balancing the atoms and balancing the mass on both sides of the equation. If you look at a simple reaction demonstrated here, we've got carbon represented. Oxygen is a diatomic molecule, two oxygen atoms, O2, yielding carbon dioxide, carbon with two oxygens bonded. This equation is already balanced, and you can see that. One carbon on this side, one carbon on that side, two oxygens, two oxygens. All of the atoms are there in the beginning, there in the end, and the mass is the same on each side. But what if the reaction isn't balanced? What if we don't make carbon dioxide? What if we make another oxide of carbon, carbon monoxide? We've got our one carbon and our two oxygens on this side, and our carbon is balanced, but we only have one oxygen on this side. 
we need one more oxygen to balance the oxygens on the left-hand side. Well, we cannot simply add another oxygen to this side. If we do that, we change the whole reaction. We're no longer making carbon monoxide. We've changed the identity of our product. So once you have decided on what your reaction is, you cannot change the formula in order to balance the reaction. You need to balance it with the correct formulas that you have for that reaction. So if we go back, we need to make one entirely new carbon monoxide molecule in order to give us the two oxygens that we have. In doing so, we've made an additional carbon that we have to balance on the left-hand side by adding another atom of carbon. At this point, we now have two carbon atoms on each side and two oxygen atoms on each side. The equation is then balanced by writing those coefficients in front. Two carbons plus one oxygen yields two carbon monoxides. So we balance the equation, but not by changing the chemical formula. Never once you've determined what the formula is, never balance an equation by changing the subscript in a formula. This changes the identity of the substance. So for example, if we were looking at sodium reacting with chlorine gas, these are the correct formulas for the reactants, we do not balance the equation by putting a 2 there. This is not the correct formula for sodium chloride. We must predict what is formed, write the formula, and then go back and balance the equation. Some of the things you'll need to know when you're balancing are your diatomic element formulas. You'll need to memorize the formulas for hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. These are all diatomic elements. If you were unaware that the formula for chlorine is Cl2, then in the previous reaction you might have written that and had an incorrect equation to represent the reaction. The diatomic elements, there are seven of them, and six of them are located in the shape of a seven on the periodic table, NOF, CLBRI, and then there's hydrogen up in your left-hand corner. Some other formulas that you'll need to memorize are some common acids, hydrochloric, sulfuric, nitric, and acetic. Later you'll learn how to actually write acid formulas, but for now, as long as you memorize a few of them, you will be fine. When you are balancing, there are, again, rules that you must follow. First, write the correct formulas. Don't change those formulas. Then count the number of atoms of each type appearing on both sides. Balance those by changing only the coefficients. Those are the numbers in front of the element. If your equation contains a polyatomic ion, such as the phosphate ion, so if we had uh, sodium phosphate, which would be Na3PO4, we would balance the phosphate ion as a unit. This is a lot easier than balancing the phosphorus and oxygen separately. We know that polyatomic ions rarely break apart in chemical reactions, although they sometimes do. And when they do, you can't balance them as a unit. But if they stay together as a unit, it's much easier to balance them. Then do a final check to make sure you're balanced. There are some hints to make balancing easier. First, always balance your metals first. If you have no metals, balance carbon first. Then balance your polyatomic ions if they stay together as a unit. So balance your metals first, then your polyatomic ions. Any other remaining elements can now be balanced. Always leave hydrogen and oxygen for last. They are usually the most difficult. Between the two of them, balance hydrogen first and leave oxygen for last. Oxygen is often more difficult because it can end up in several different compounds spread throughout the reaction. But if you follow these four basic hints, you'll be able to balance pretty much anything by inspection. 
there are many ways to balance and many people will make a list of elements on each side listing what they have uh, I prefer simply to balance by inspection but you will learn as you go along which method is best for you using our method that we described we're going to take and balance the metals on each side first you can see that this indicates we have three zirconiums on this side and only one over here so we put a coefficient in front of the zirconium. We cannot change a subscript or change a formula. We now have balanced the zirconiums. We'll move on. We have only hydrogen and oxygen left to balance, so we'll balance our hydrogens first. We have two hydrogens on this side and two on this side, so hydrogen is already balanced. Leaving oxygen for last, on this side we have one oxygen. Here we have four oxygens. We'll put a four in front of water in order to balance the four oxygens. We cannot put a four beside this. That would change the entire identity of the compound. So in getting the correct balance of our oxygens, we have to readjust our hydrogens. We now have four times two, or eight hydrogens. So we put a four here to balance our hydrogens. Then do a quick check. Three zirconiums, three zirconiums, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, four oxygens, four oxygens, and we're balanced.